Thank you, Dr. Bird. Uh, I have the distinct pleasure of debating my good friend, Tishon Lynch. So many years ago, I was a lot like Tishon. I was young and I was brave and I was kind of dumb. And as you can tell from my gray hair, uh, I'm now older, uh, still kind of dumb, uh, but I've gained a little bit of wisdom along that path and I'm gonna try and share it with you here. <laughs> so why pull the player? And it begins with just an evaluation of the child. What is this child, what, what expectations do they have? Do they want to play in high school only? Uh, do they want to play in college, uh, perhaps D1, D2, D3? Do they have aspirations of Olympic level uh, athleticism, like a, a young Cristiano Ronaldo? Uh, and what comes into play uh, being a team physician is understanding the mentality that's behind some of these decisions with these, these kiddos. And a lot of them, they see this chance and opportunity for playoffs, for state championships, and to them, this is their entire world and they cannot see past, you know, their high school years. And so the injury is also important. And the reason that I bring up injury is Tishon's going to argue he can fix anything. And although my friend is a very talented and technically gifted surgeon, there are certain things that we cannot reliably fix. And I will tell you that chondral damage is one of those problems that can develop when you don't pull an athlete and you don't, um, uh, you, you allow them to finish the season and they can potentially develop chondral damage. And then I always talk to them about long-term. I tell them, you know, you may be 17 now, but imagine this problem rearing its ugly head when you're 29, 30, 40, you're trying to play in the backyard with your kiddos and you've got a grade four lesion. And that's important in the decision-making. So I'll give you a case example. 21-year-old uh, Division One American football player um, uh, at the University of Akron, which I'm one of the, the docs there. He's a running back. They had an opportunity several years back at the Mid-American Conference Championship. So he was injured and it was a dramatic injury. Toss sweep and he really took a bad shot and developed really, really bad groin pain. So we evaluated him on the sideline. He had a positive impingement sign. All the things that would hearken to us worried about him having intraarticular pathology. So we counseled him after the game. He was adamant that he was going to finish the season. This was his uh, final year of eligibility and he wanted to, to move forward with that. So what was our plan? We injected him with corticosteroid. Uh, we got him involved with the athletic trainers and physiotherapists. He finished the season with no championship. And he was disappointed, as were all of us. He got further injured in that game to the point where he had to be on crutches and was unable to bear weight. He had difficulty ambulating. He had difficulties with his activities of daily living. And so, of course, we worked him up with an MRI. So we look at his x-rays and you can see on the image on the left, the true AP, the pelvis, he does have a small crossover sign, prominent ischial spine sign and tonus grade zero changes. When we look at his done view, you can see a massive, massive cam lesion uh, with an alpha angle greater than 65 degrees. We know from the literature that that gives him a four times higher likelihood of having a chondral injury. So when we look at his MRI and look very carefully, he did indeed have a labral tear and this is very, very subtle. But again, what we talked about earlier, that gray stripe, you can see that that slight color change and slight thinning compared to this more medial cartilage made me extremely concerned that me, he may have done more than simply injure his labrum. We look at a scope imaging. So this was what I didn't want to see. And we can see here, just past the 12 o'clock position, a large chondral flap. We probe this further. And unfortunately, we can see exposed subchondral bone. And this became a difficult decision for me to make. Do we simply debris that flap and microfracture it? Or do we do an abrasion arthroplasty, perhaps fiber and glue it and repair it? So we chose the latter. Uh, I did a uh, abrasion arthroplasty behind it. And we did labral base fixation, grabbing that chondral flap, very carefully preserving that, and then incorporating that with a stitch through the labrum. This was a very, very tenuous repair. And I'll tell you that I was worried about this kiddo for a long, long time. So finally, I regretted my decision. And this is why I want to compel you guys out there that are taking care of these young athletes. Think about the athlete, not just in context of the season and what their expectations are, but long-term. Again, you know, doing an abrasion arthroplasty with chondral flap repair, was that the best that I could do for this child? Could I potentially preserved him uh, from having a um, chondral lesion? So when in doubt, pull the player. Thank you again. Those are my kiddos.